Jeff Dad 2000 show. Show, 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 show. This is where I'll do a roundtable discussion with random kids or students and a bit of cooking for all you kids and wonder what goes on behind the scenes in Skidmore's Emily's Garden. And we might even take a few visits to other shows. Check out the other stations in the D Hall. Check out the fashion and music tips in the Dave's Food and College Yeah, Here's the training. Hello again, welcome back to season two of the Chef Dad 2000 show. Tonight we're gonna do a all local organic mushroom fresh green salad. This year we're getting a lot more local farms, a lot more organic stuff, we're getting a lot more seasonal stuff, we're getting stuff from people that I know, people they know, so we're keeping it in the family for everybody. Today I got my big old thing here. That's all. Local organic oyster mushroom, spicy green salad with great tomatoes, fresh herb dressing, and or California organic walnuts. I got to represent my West Coast stuff. So what we'll do is we'll prep this for you, and we'll show you, and you'll be able to get this in the D Hall wherever you want, and a D Hall near you, maybe if it gets popular enough. Okay, now we'll go down. You got all this in. All right. First, we'll start with these uh, local organic greens. These are from Sunset Hill Farms, which is probably over that way because that's which way the sun sets. And it's a mixture. They call them spicy greens because there's a lot of uh, like mustard green. I got some frise, some or organic red leaf, some uh, baby Boston, some more. Uh, I think that's a beet green. So I'm not exactly sure what they call that one. These are the. This walnuts may contain nuts. These come from my friends at Dixon Ridge Farms in Winters, California. Russ and Kathy Lester, they uh, supplied us with all these beautiful organic walnuts. This is some cheese from Vermont. That's kind of local, it's regional. These are some grape tomatoes from DeVoe Rainbow Farms in Clifton Park. These are, again, the organic mushrooms. These come from Sun Hill, Sunset Hill Farms. These are an oyster mushroom. Very delicious, look at that. It looks like something that grows under the sea, like coral, watch. Okay, that was my simulation of underwater. These are portobello mushrooms, which you see, these were grown in Pennsylvania. That's kind of local, but not as local, but those are organic as again. Button mushrooms. Everybody recognizes those mushrooms. Those aren't the kind you get at a fish show either. Those are just the regular mushrooms. So what I'll usually do when I'm plating for thousands and thousands of people at Skidmore Dining Hall, I'll load a bunch of plates up like this and, brrr, and do a thousand at a time, a couple hundred at a time. But for you, I make it more elegant. We'll start with the greens, like I said before, in the bowl. Oh, yeah, it does have a beautiful herb vinaigrette, which you can pick up any kind of vinaigrette you want. Start with maybe a quarter pound, a half a pound of greens. You want to keep these chilled and clean because they'll wilt on you really quick because they're very delicate. I have all the mushrooms here, so what I'll do is I'll dress this a little bit with the herb vinaigrette, toss it up, very lightly dress it so it doesn't get too weighed down. When these greens are real light, if you weigh them down with too much oil, they go flat on you. That's the other guy on the, on the drums, everybody. Give it up for the other guy on the drums. So there you start with the dressed greens right there. I need another bowl. I know, I need a glove too. Yeah, we'll fix that in post. Don't worry, we'll edit all that part out where I'm walking around. Okay, once I have the greens on the plate, I'll take the rest of the items and dress them separately because I want them to be, sit on top so I won't really mix them in with the greens. I'll dress the greens and then dress everything else separately. So I'll start with a few of the mushrooms. And I, I like to put a lot of these in because these are really tasty. 
And these are a special treat because you don't see a lot of these around. So I'll take those, all the mushrooms and the walnuts. Catch me using the spoon there. Very professional like. Now remember again, these walnuts contain nuts. These are some beautiful little mush, uh, little tomatoes. Check out how small those are. And I put a little bit, a little bit of the Vermont Parmesan cheese, just a little bit to give it some nutty flavor. Now the dressing I used is we whip up in a blender. It's fresh herbs, one part vinegar to three parts oil. You can put a little bit of juice in there too to give it some acid if you want to substitute half the vinegar for half the oil. But it, this I'll dress a little heavier than the greens because it's not going to matter much because this stuff is like sponges. Mushrooms like to soak up a lot of liquid or liquid. So you can see the green color. There's a lot of herbs in there. I got uh, basil, cilantro, and um, parsley in there. So you can see that all nice and wet. If you're going to serve it right away, you can do it like this. If you want to make a bunch of salads ahead of time at a dinner party or something, then don't put the dressing on and you can just put the dressing on the side. So now I got that all mixed up. You got your lightly tossed greens like this, see? Then you put just a big pile of that on top. You always want to make sure you got some of the little bit of everything showing, you know? So if you've got a friend that you don't think you're cheating them. All right, and then I'll make two. It's one of my test customers. Want to test out a salad? Can you do nuts? It's walnuts, all organic. Local oyster mushrooms, spicy green salad with grape tomato, fresh herb dressing, California organic walnuts. Look at that. Share it with a friend. That's on the menu for tomorrow. That's on the menu for tomorrow. All right, so there you go. That's that salad. Again, that's all organic, all local. Not all organic, but mostly organic. All local good stuff. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can do that if you want. Yeah. Because I know somebody will eat that wrap. All right, you got some shot of that? Okay, now go back up on me here and we'll... I kept forgetting what I was calling this thing. Give it up one time for from Global Cafe, Polly Kraus, Carlson. Woo, Woo everybody. <laughs> All right. Woo. All right. All right, get out of here. Full support. All right, this guy. This is the real guy, though. Okay. Uh, welcome to the, another episode of the Chef Dad 2000 show. This is our first episode in the 2000-2008 year. And I'm here with Marianne Weiss, who's our total snowboard shredding instructor. What's up, Marianne? Not much. <laughs> um, I had a thing here that says left to right, but she's the only one that showed. We're waiting on the Frisbee girls and all the skateboarding and motorcycle riding tricksters to come in, but we'll see if they show up. Uh, you do any other sports besides snowboarding? Um, yeah, well, I used to play soccer and run track, but I haven't continued that here. Uh, what is the snowboard forecast for this year? Um, hopefully it's good. The weather.com says it's supposed to snow. like. Soon? Yeah. So Thanksgiving you, break? Mount Snow actually opened already, um, which is good. Okay, the girls who told me about you said that you're an instructor. Yeah. Where at? Um, well, I worked at a mountain in Connecticut called Mohawk Mountain, and um, hopefully I'll work at Gore. Do you have to cut yeah. your hair in Mohawks to work there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. That would be cool. Or just you could have the helmets with like fake Mohawks yeah. on? Yeah. No. You don't have to do that. Uh, um, how big is that mountain? Is that it's like, really little. It's, it's like a, the biggest mountain in Connecticut, but it's like a hill. So who are you teaching? Are you doing kids or yeah. everybody? I choose to work with the little kids because it's kind of awkward. Like I find it's awkward teaching. Are they all into it? The little kids, yeah, usually. When they do a trick, are they like, oh man, mm -hmm. 
that trick is 22,000 points yeah. on snowboarder, right? Yeah. They do, right? Yeah, either, do they, either they get really excited or like they'll cry. <laughs> so. so is it the like the little junior kid skate park, you know, they only have the ramps that are like this tall because yeah. that's about all they, I can really handle myself. Yeah. And I did some like really rudimentary trick and the little kid was like, oh man, that's like 3,000 points on Tony Hawk. Yeah, they jump was, off. They're like, oh, got My kid, my, my claim to fame is I'm the same age as Tony Hawk. Yeah. So my kid's like, yeah, he's the same age as Tony Hawk. And everybody's like, Tony Hawk's not that old. <laughs> That's so sad. So when I broke my ribs skateboarding behind the spa last summer, that was the big thing. It's like, you're dead. You are you can't skate. You're as old as Tony Hawk, but you can't skate like Tony Hawk. No. You should, where was your helmet? You always tell me where a helmet. Where you was your helmet? helmet? I was on break. I was skating behind the spa. Oh. You know, the ramp that comes yeah. down. You see pictures on my MySpace page. My ribs. <laughs> my broken rib x ray. Oh my it's god. You should, yeah. you should apply for a scar to that show. So, how did you get started snowboarding? Did you ski first? Yeah. Or? I skied like since I was two up until I was 12. Because my whole family, they're avid skiers. My dad's a ski instructor. Do you get the, uh, the snobbery from the skiers? Do they look down their noses at you because you, you're bored? They're like, oh, you crossed to the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but I hated skiing. Like, I just, but I knew I had to be at the mountain because my dad was an instructor and they loved skiing. So I tried snowboarding, just randomly decided to take a lesson and I fell in love with it. Cool. So how many years until you started teaching other people how to snowboard? Um, well, you had to be 16 to teach at the mountain I worked at. So when I started, I actually started working like 15 and a half, like illegally. I was paid like under the table. Hey, don't worry, we'll edit that part out. <laughs> And um, no, and then like so when I was 16. Cool. So. so when you're here at school, do you take like the weekend trips up to like West Mountain and what else is close around here? Killington? Yeah. Well, I'm actually a freshman, so I haven't. You haven't yet? I haven't yet, but I bought my Killington season pass. So you're ready. So yeah, ready for the season. You got a new board? Um, I got a new board at the end of last year. What kind? A room. Rome? Yeah, detail. What kind of uh, sponsors you got? You got sponsors yet? No. No sponsors? I wish. Right. Maybe you could sponsor me. Yeah, 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 sponsor. yeah. We'll put the Jeff Dead 2000 on your, uh, jacket. On your jacket. Yeah. We'll just get somebody like Zoomies to donate the jacket. Yeah. My, uh, when I was growing up, all my buddies were, they were work for Sims, Pal Peralta. Mm -hmm. Do you skateboard too? I, I have an old school skateboard, yeah, but, but yeah. the, uh, but they were into like, when they were first developing snowboards, they worked for, uh, Chucky Barfoot. Yeah. I don't know if you ever heard of Barfoot boards you know, Burton and all those guys yeah. and they would take a regular skateboard and put it on what is about the same size as a snowboard now but it was mm -hmm. just plastic and they would just strap like velcro strap their boots yeah or on. some people would duct tape their boots yeah on. yeah, yeah. It, 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 I would watch them go down the hill and I'm like that looks like fun man the first time I tried it I just that I think they just like to take me so they would have crash footage yeah. for their videos <laughs> they'd be like do it again do it again and Oh, God. All the way down the hill. You know, I'd get down one time and I'd fall like 15, 16 times. That's funny. I'd get to the lodge first though. Yeah. Because they'd, they'd be up there. Um, what's your big yearly event? Do you have like family trips that you take? And um, Yeah, we usually like around spring break. Like this past spring break we went to um, Colorado, Breckenridge. Nice. And, um, Copper Mountain? Um, no, it was, it was Breck. But, um, it snowed so much. It was amazing. They got like a freak snowstorm because it was in April and it snowed like three feet. It was I was awesome. gonna say most people go to the beach. Yeah, no, You're not looking my for family. Snow. Not my family. That last bit of snow exactly. that's still hanging up there. Yeah, but Jackson Hole was probably the best trip. That what was, was uh, talk about how I crash and burn every time I do any kind of sport. I think that's my fun part. Yeah. I enjoy. Is uh, what was your most tragic crash? Well, I mean. There are very few like female instructors at my mountain, so I always ride with like. Then my brother's an instructor too, so I would always hang out with him and his friends. So I'd try to like keep up with them and do everything they could do, even though like I was never as fast or as great as them. But so um, there was like a a box in the park, yeah. and um, and I had done it like multiple times before. I was like, oh, this is easy, and I like it's that the second you get your edge into the box, like because you want to go flat. Once you dig your edge in, you're done for. So I had my edge in, and I was like trying to catch my balance, trying to like make it as cool as possible, but it was just. And everybody's watching. Yeah, I fell on my back, got the wind knocked out of me, and and but like it would have been okay if they like laughed, 
but they like all ran over and they're like, oh, are you okay? Are you okay? And so oh, it just like no. intensified. And you bounce up. I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, was, and then you hobble up. I'm okay. Up. I'm okay. Because like I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> so, but yeah, just I've had a bunch of them, like just being the only girl. So what do you just do now that you're a freshman? Are you gonna be able to be an instructor during your winter break? Or? Well, um, I talked to an instructor at Gore, and he said, like you should like. You, because I am a level one instructor, I wouldn't even really need to like audition just to be show an instructor. Up. Yeah, like kind of just show up. But I don't have a car on campus, uh, so um, I'm no gonna snowmobile. wait. <laughs> yeah, I'll ATV. bike ride. So I think I'll probably wait until next year when oh, I have a car. So I'll just feel it out this year. So what's your big trip then? If you're not gonna be working, you gotta have some trip planned. I know. Um, I'm not sure. I think we might go back to Jackson Hole. Wyoming? Um, Wyoming, yeah. So, Those in March. Are way up there. I love, uh, Jackson Hole's my favorite mountain. We would go to, what's that place called? Big Bear Lake. Because you could surf in the morning in LA. Yeah. And then you could go night, or night skiing at yeah. night in the same day. That's my like. That was our, well we wanted to have an ultimate frisbee game in the middle, so we were going to go, <laughs> go, it was skateboarding too. We were gonna oh surf. We're gonna surf first thing in the morning, then go skateboarding right after that, then play ultimate frisbee, and then ride up the hill and and go skiing like for the night. And I was like, you know, we're like, oh, we gotta. We're not gonna be able to ski. We'll be all wore out. Yeah. But um, that'd be cool. Are you, is there a snowboard club? You're yeah. Skid one? Well, there's a snow sports club. So, so it's like everybody. It's skiers and snowboarders are. Do you include the cross country skiers, or is that I really? Don't know. That's not really even a sport, is it? <laughs> Is it like poker you see on ESPN? You're like, yeah, no, it's poker is for it, man. It's the guy's 400 pounds with a cowboy hat on and he's on ESPN. It's just walking, basically, with extra yeah. length. We had the snowstorm last year, and Ben, one of our cooks, he came in from downtown on his snow oh, skis. Yeah. We've seen the skis down there. I'm like, Somebody snow skied to work. It was after the big blizzard that like, closed the oh. school. But we have to come and make sure who's ever stranded here is. Right. Is all right, so if anybody needs lessons next year, not this year, you can come see Mary Ann Weiss. Thanks for coming on the Chef Dad 2000 show. No problem. Today we're going to be making the black bean wrap, which is a, she likes. It's very similar to a Taco Bell, <coughs> we'll edit that part out, <laughs> a crunch wrap, where we take a black bean burger and fold it up into a tortilla and make a big flat wrap. It looks like a big stop sign, I guess, yeah, or a pentagram. Yeah, like, I don't even know what shape that is. You eat them every time I make them? Yeah, they're so good. I want to make them with the Malibu burgers. Everybody wants oh, those, Oh, I too. love Malibu burgers. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. So she must be one of my good customers, too. Yeah. All right, so in the next step, when we come back from our commercial break, we'll be doing the black bean flat wrap. Adios. All right. All right, other guys going to have a smoke. So while he's out doing that, we're going to show you how we ripped off Taco Bell. One night after a SPAC show during the summer while you guys were all out, we were having a Taco Bell crunch wrap, and we thought, dude, we can totally do that with a black bean burger. So I talked to the lady at Taco Bell one day. She let me get back there and showed me how they make the crunch wraps, and we kind of ripped off their idea with the veggie burger. Okay, okay we'll start this. It's called a black bean flat wrap. We start with a whole multi-grain tortilla. These ones I've warmed up so they're a little more pliable. So they fold and don't rip. Also, I'll start with a, a black bean burgers. You can get all this stuff at Price Chopper, Hannaford, a and whatever you have near you. Vons, if you're on the West Coast, on my internet feeds. I got some sliced tomatoes. These are some beefsteak tomatoes, although they're kind of small for beefsteaks. I got some fresh spinach. I got some onions and any kind of cheese you want. Right now we're just using some Vermont um, cheddar cheese. So what you do is you want to take this and instead of making a regular burrito, we're going to make a wrap, flat wrap. So you start out with a hole like this. I try to put the burger next to this so when you're grilling it, it gets a lot of heat onto that. Next we'll hit it with the spinach. Not too much because you don't want it to give up so much liquid that it's really soggy. Then you hit it with some onions. If you want to use sliced onions, that works too. Then I use some sriracha mayonnaise. I take sriracha, which is like a Chinese ketchup, we call it. It's just a, like a sweet chili sauce. 
We mix that with mayonnaise. We put in a little squirt bottles, and you put that on there. You could probably put anything you wanted, Tabasco. Then I hit it with the cheese. Here's the tricky part. Oh, don't forget your tomato on top. You want to fold it to look like a stop sign. These you can make up in your dorm rooms or wherever. If you got a George Foreman grill, you can make this. So write this down. You can uh, fold the top like so. Fold it again. Anybody that's done origami could figure this out. Turn it, fold it again, turn it, fold it again, and then fold the whole side up and over like that. So if you see, that'll be a five-sided pentagram. All right, so we're gonna do that one more time for the slow pokes. I might even speed this up on the camera so it goes Cook the burger. A little bit of spinach, a little bit of onions, a little bit of cheese, some sriracha homemade mayonnaise, tomato, fold it, fold it, fold it, etc. etc. All right, and you can prepare that for your friends and family. Okay. I'm laughing at Mike, he's got a big piece of cheese pizza in his face, sausage pizza. Okay, for me, this is a glor uh, glorified George Foreman grill oven. It's pretty much a panini press, but if you got a George Foreman grill, it's the same thing. It gets real hot. So we open that up, we put a little spray in there, or if you want to just keep it dry on your George Foreman, it won't stick. I have to put a little spray on mine because I've been cooking veggie burgers in this all day. Now, after I folded this, I always put the uh, fold side down just so I'm sure that it's going to grill. And then I don't want to really press that down real hard because then it squeezes everything out. And then we'll have a boring musical interlude while this cooks. I don't need I don't need a reason, man. Just take your burger and beat it. All right. Okay, after about four minutes, this thing will be done. It'll be nice and crunchy on both sides. So you can see it's nice and toasty and it holds together because we put the cheese up near the top. Normally I would just serve it like this, right up on a plate. Like so. But since we're live direct on TV, we're gonna cut this in half to let you know what it looks like. You can see it's nice and gooey and tasty. A little more dramatic when you slam it like that. So if you wanted to get fancy, you could serve it like that. This is what happens when your little buzz did Taco Bell at one in the morning. What are you looking at? There you go, for you and your friends. Here, have one. You wanna try one of these, dude? Black bean flat wrap? All right, beat it. All right, welcome back to the second part of our Chef Dad 2000 extravaganza. As you saw before, we made the black, uh, black bean flat wrap, which everybody enjoys. You had that before? I don't think I have. No? I th should try it, though. We're here with Alicia. She's in on the or in the crew? On the crew. Because I'm in the road crew. She's on the crew. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> when is crew season? Um, technically, we have two seasons. We have the spring, which is our main season, when we do the shorter yep. racing pieces. And then we have the fall, where we do longer head Why races. Why don't you just briefly explain what crew is to me? Because, you know, you see people in the skinny little boat. And yep. you see like the, what's it called, a 
skull mm -hmm. and you see like eight ten people whatever it is in this little boat like this big and you're wondering like why doesn't it sink but just briefly explaining what crew is or you know just um okay well crew is using um your legs and your back and arms to propel a uh, shell, which is the name for the boat that we're using. Either skull if um, a rower has two oars, or uh -huh. sweep when a rower has one oar. And the boats vary in size um, from eight people to four to two and then one. So the one is like the old like Viking boats where the guy was with the whip and the drum, boom, boom, and everybody's on either side? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Except there's no whip. Yeah. And, uh, and there's no drum. And you're using your legs. And uh, there's no like black and white footage. Do uh, what do they call the guy? The cox. The, yeah, the coxswain. Coxswain. That's the job I wanted. Come on, you guys. Come on, quicker, quicker, faster. Who does that? Um, our coxswain right now is Alyssa Nadworny. and she's awesome. She's awesome. So what do you just have to have a forceful voice and be really light? Um, you have to be light and small in order to fit into the shell. And then you have to be, not forceful, but be able to communicate with the boat. And then you also, one of your main jobs that a lot of people don't realize is steering the boat. So they have oh, controls. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. I yep. thought they just. No, they yell at us, but they the also people. steer the boat. So that if we have a course that's windy, we can get around it fine. Oh, it's not just straight. I thought it was just straight line. So nope, they do like slalom, always. they have cones or buoys? We do have buoys, yep. Oh, that's cool. When is the, uh, well, we're here, I, I always hear that you guys are like right on the on the lake, right? On Saratoga Lake? Yeah, we row on Fish Creek, which is the outlet for Saratoga Lake. So we're actually, sometimes we go into the lake, but a lot of the time we're on the creek. Well, going into the lake probably a good idea, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> Can be dangerous, into the water. absolutely. But I remember you guys were out there like in the dead of winter one time and it was like you were waiting for the yep. ice to break up or mm -hmm. something. Was it last summer? Or I mean last, last winter? Yeah, last winter. We are generally out in the water when there's still ice. Oh. Um, I rode in the sun, the rain, the snow, the hail. The only thing we don't row in is thunder. Fire? And lightning. Um, we probably <laughs> row in the So that's where you do it. Do What's the, like the big event for you guys every year? Is there a big like a tournament or what do they call it, an invitational? Yeah, in the fall, the big event for us is Head of the Fish, which is our home race. Um, and that's just sort of a fun um, end of the fall season. And then in the spring, we have Liberty League Championships. So that's all of the schools in our yeah. sort of district. Yeah. And we compete in that. Um, and we do pretty well in that every year. And then the other big event for us is the New York State Championships which recently we've done well and we're looking forward to You guys were ranked number two last year, NCAA? You guys were highly ranked, I remember. We were was nationally. It last year? Or the, yeah. Yeah, nationally, I think we were 13th. Um, for a school for, our size, yep. that's awesome, right? Yep, it was exciting. And then we won second Lynn Liberty Leagues that's for what the, I'm yep, the second. varsity women. So what's the, for this year? For this year, um, we're going for higher. Number I one? Think I mean, at least for Liberty Leagues, that's probably our goal. Nice. Um, we'd like to get up there for NCAA. Um, we have a couple of girls that are abroad right now, and we're excited to get them back in the spring. And then we also have a few people that do other sports that um, will return in the spring as well, and a huge crew of novice. So Novice, like excited. the rookie? Yep, like the rookie. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting here with all the sweet mates, and somebody just recruited. Do you like recruit out of high school? So is there you know what I mean? Yeah. Is there like high school crews? Because I'm i from California, we have surf teams. You know, we, um, we do recruit some, our coach recruits some from high schools. Um, the, our school doesn't allow for actual recruiting, but we definitely contact some rowers before. Um, but a lot of our team, it's one of the few teams at Skidmore where you don't have to have any previous experience to So join. you recruit from freshmen too that are already oh, here? Absolutely, freshmen, juniors, Look for the girls with yeah. that. You look good, like you'd be good on the left side of the boat. You have one good, <laughs> strong left arm. And, uh, or leg, yep. What is? Do you guys have a big fundraiser every year, or is there anything that people on campus can do to help you guys yeah, out, absolutely. aside from coming down to the lake and yelling? Yeah, um, we have two main things that we do. The first of which is we row a marathon every fall. So every God. winter, um, it's coming up December, I think, 8th. So you um, sponsor, you go around like... Yep, we're trying to collect money for it. So we'll be rowing partially for charity and partially to support our team. Cool. 
Um, that's 42,195 meters. It takes about three and a half hours. And then uh, we also do a... Um, <laughs> that's a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> We also do a raffle during winter training to collect money again for um, our own team funding. During winter training is like January and... Yeah, it's um, the end of December, January and February. So, where can we get tickets? K-Center? Um, you can come to me. She's or... always sitting in this booth, by the way, <laughs> the, right behind Emily's garden. You can find them at dinner time back here in the booth. <laughs> Pretty much every on the day. Set. They're always on the set. Um, and then also um, contact our coach, which is... Jim Tucci or Tucci. J Tucci at skimmer.edu if you're interested. All right, or find well, us thanks. Around. Thank you so much. Well, got you get back to your rep. Check this dinner out that she makes. She presents it very nicely. <laughs> her friends are all done. Well, they didn't want to wait for her. So thanks for joining us again. This was the semi sports edition episode. Episode. So tune in next time for our next episode. Adios. Make me a sandwich. It's better than Taco Bell. <laughs>